What the, what were you talk? who was the talker? I was the talker. What was your passion? Skiing. Skiing, awesome. Did he label and mirror? He labeled a lot. Labeled a lot? Yep. Did he mirror? Yes, once or twice. Okay, mostly labels, cool. Mostly labels. Did, did he come out of the labels? Did he ever Dave, do anything wrong? Um, there was one time where I think you said it feels like um, that kind of that kind of tripped me up in like the, in the pattern there. Uh, but for the most part, it was it was pretty solid and you know got me off the X, if you will. How was it for you? Felt very natural. You know, I, I didn't feel like anything. I didn't feel like it was artificial. Ah, uh, awesome. Okay. And all right, so the labeling and mirroring, I don't know how much practice, how much ha opportunity you've had to, ha had to practice up to now. I don't know how many reps you've gotten in. I get a sense from what you were telling me before. You've been applying a book, so you've probably been labeling and mirroring some. Yeah, that's accurate. How was, this ac how was the exercise? It was good. It really felt like a natural flow of a conversation with, you know, somebody tells you something about themselves, and then suddenly he's off and running into way different. It's not about skiing. It's not at all about skiing. What did it become? Uh, well, if I go to the deep dive, right, uh, he's trying to develop that camaraderie he developed through skiing that he didn't get from team sports, where he could be individual, but he could be with friends, where he developed lifelong relationships, and now he's at a point in his life where that's once a year he wants to be able to develop that in a community he lives in. Okay, now how long were we, were, thank you, how long were, were we in the exercise, roughly? Three minutes, maybe. Now, based on what you just heard about these two gentlemen, this gentleman right here, how many of his core values as a human being and as a, and as a businessman do you know? Lifelong relationships, camaraderie, team player, a critical part of his life. You know, so these quickly uncover issues in very short periods of time that, I don't, that drive relationships, which means friendships, and business relationships, yes? And, you know, I was, uh, I did a keynote with uh, the Apollo Private Equity Group just a couple of days ago here in town. And they were like, well, can't you still go play golf? So, and I said, all right, so you guys go play golf together for what? To find out what we just found out in the last three minutes. Only instead of being on a golf course for eight hours, it took three minutes here. So this is why, and some of you are discovering this already, this is why your professions accelerate. You begin to dial into people very quickly. <clears throat> and you create a great relationship between the two of you, and it takes three minutes. And I can tell you something, every single time that Brandon and Derek do the exercise in front of the group, I learn more about Derek. And I've known Derek since 2001. Is that when we first met, probably, roughly? Uh, and, I'm, and I'm learning more about them every time. Thank goodness Brandon's good at this stuff. Huh? So this is how it's applied. And, we, and those of you who are still getting your reps in to get over your awkwardness, you heard a gentleman here describe what it was like to be labeled in an environment where he knows he's being labeled in an exercise, in a room, at a seminar. And he said it was natural, it was comfortable, it was fine. If you have any misgivings about these skills at all, this environment should tell you when your counterpart is completely good with it and they know you're using techniques on them. You will never encounter some, a person that you're talking to that's more aware of the fact that techniques are being deployed on them in the moment and everybody here is okay with it. So it's not that you're using a technique, it's what your objective is, to create a better relationship should never be concerned about whether or not they don't like the techniques. If somebody on the other side doesn't like the techniques, it's not because the techniques have shortcomings, it's telling you that there's a pretty good chance this is someone you don't want to do business with. If someone is openly telling you they do not want to collaborate with you, what are they telling you? If I'm communicating to you, I don't want you to know about me. I Back don't here want we, you we had a comment, they don't trust you. They don't trust you, yeah. All right, so there's an interesting, interesting thing, too. Now, if they don't want you to know these things, now your further diagnosis is, is uncover what the trust issues are. Now, maybe you're never going to get past, past it, but that's, that's a great observation. It's a trust issue, and, and, and the, the flip side of that might be that once this person trusts me, they trust so fully and so completely, that's why they're so defensive. 
So how long is how hard is it going to be to get on the other side of that wall? 